Today you've joined hundreds of established and emerging writers who are discovering ways to reach their writing goals and have fun by being more curious, creative, and productive. You're listening to Ann Croker, Writing Coach. This is episode number 48. Why do we writers put so much pressure on ourselves? When you were little, maybe you wrote stories or poems just for fun. You read them to your friends or your siblings. You added suspense and included ponies, unicorns, pirates, and space aliens. You hurried to school to share your latest project with your friends in 4th grade or 7th grade or 10th grade. Ask my high school friends and they'll tell you about the stories I typed up featuring popular singers like Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran. The reader got to insert her name as the love interest in -in fill-in-the-blank adventures like The Medallion of Kilimanjaro. I was nervous when I shared those with my friends, but as soon as I saw someone's eyes light up and then people were passing them around, I was motivated. Writing it was fun. No grades were involved and the people seemed to truly enjoy them, so I wrote more. I wrote for the joy. No pressure, other than hoping for the happy encouragement of friends. But maybe at some point, someone made fun of you for writing your version of The Medallion of Kilimanjaro. Or maybe your friends liked a poem you wrote, so you tried to submit it to the school paper and they turned you down. Or maybe you sent something out to a magazine and got a rejection letter, and that just doused your enthusiasm and stole your joy, and the playfulness that had once delighted you evaporated. At some point, maybe in college, maybe as a young adult, you realized if you're going to be a writer, it looks like you got to get serious about it. So you studied the craft, you maybe studied the business of writing, and you launched your career, and you've been steadily progressing, each stage feeling more and more important and more and more intense. The stakes seem higher and higher, and you're putting pressure on yourself to perform, to produce, to avoid any misstep. Or maybe you had a different response to those early rejections. Maybe you gave up, and you went into accounting or nursing, and you did something else for years. But then somewhere along the line, something stirred in you. Something reminded you of that early love of writing. And you've waited so long, you too feel like the stakes are high. You feel like you don't have any time to waste. So you're putting pressure on yourself to succeed straight out of the gate with your first attempts, your first submissions. Wherever you're at on that spectrum, submitting an essay to a literary journal or an article to a magazine or a book proposal to an agent, the possibility of rejection feels intense. You might feel like it's going to make or break you as a writer. For some, it may feel like this acceptance or rejection will be your one and only chance. For others, it might feel like success has an expiration date, and this might be the day your idea gets tossed aside and it's the end of your career. If this editor or agent or publisher says, no, you're doomed, friend, that is a lot of pressure. There's a time to take your work seriously, but the pressure? No, no, that's too much. You can't survive that over the long haul, and it will steal your joy. Don't do that to yourself. I suggest you find a way to capture some of that thrill and that joy of writing just for fun, for your own fun, because it felt like play, because you felt free, because it made you laugh. Write it for yourself or write it for someone you know will love it, even if it's goofy, even if it's sappy, maybe because it's goofy and sappy. Find these outlets and you're going to have a much healthier writing experience when you dive into the more official work. We can talk about the business part of writing in another episode, but I think we need to be reminded more than once, if you find the fun again, you'll be taking risks, creative risks, and you'll be growing. You'll approach projects with much more freedom, free from that pressure. And with freedom from that pressure, the words will flow, the story will engage, the ideas will come to you, and you'll be far more likely to explore ideas and techniques that end up sharpening your writing skills. You'll probably write with a more confident voice. For all of you listening who are hesitant or fearful for whatever reason to take the next step, For the writer out there feeling the pressure to perform, to produce perfection, to nail each paragraph, each word choice, or else all is lost, let's try to find the joy. Let's try to find that freedom. Here are a couple of suggestions that might lighten things up for you. Remember free writing? 
You might have learned that technique a long time ago in high school, college, at a writing workshop. Well, my friend Kate Motong hosts 5-Minute Friday. I'll give you the link in the show notes. The idea is that you would write for 5 minutes only, like set the timer, start it, and write for 5 minutes on the one-word prompt that she provides. And then you can post the words on your blog and link it up at her website, and there are directions at her website, and I can, I can give you the link. The idea, she says, is to free write, which means no editing, no overthinking, no worrying about perfect grammar or punctuation, just write. You can make other aspects of your writing fun. In an article at Tweet Speak Poetry, a poet highlighted how she started sending out her poems, almost like the license plate game, trying to land a poem in a journal in every state. At the time of publication, she had achieved her goal of being in every state except one, Kansas. These are just two simple ideas. Grab some writing prompts and start using those. Do what you can to try to lighten things up. Let's release the pressure, friends. Let's make writing fun again. I hope you do have some assignments or goals that feel high stakes. I hope you are reaching, but I also hope you are finding joy. I'm Ann Croker, cheering you on as a writing coach in your ear. Everywhere we may meet, in my website, on Facebook, Twitter, here on this podcast, or even in person, I'm always looking for ideas to share with you that will help you achieve your writing goals and have fun by being more curious, creative, and productive. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.